This is a demonstration of my workflow to refine a shot. In this first part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you the main tools I will use in the web editor for those who are not really familiar with it or just want a little review of it. What is the graph editor? First of all, it's not something you have to be scared of. Graph editor is very helpful to adjust and edit your animation keys, to polish the curve, to solve some issues, create cycles, and have much more control on your animation. It also will help you to be faster uh, once you'll be used to it and when you will learn all the tricks to speed up your workflow and improve the quality of your animation in few steps. Here I have my simple animation with all my keys in the timeline and let's go to open the graph editor from window of animation editors graph editor. I'm using my 2015 so if you have other version you may find it a bit visually different. Like any other panel you can click in the button right angle to scale it and adjust it as you want or you can change the layout view scene by choosing this persp graph and you will have the view scene split it in two windows with your camera in the upper part in this case you have the purse but you can change it with the camera you prefer and the graph editor below by clicking in the middle you can change the size of the windows let's select all the controls of our character and as you can see our animation is visualized in the graph editor as curves each curve is the representation of the motion of the different axes that you can see on the left and you can select each axis one by one or select multiple axes by keeping press shift to move in a graph editor, just do as with the viewport navigation. For the pan, press Alt or Option and middle drag. And for the zoom, press Alt or Option and right drag. To fit the entire curve in the window, point on the graph editor and press A. If you want to zoom on a part of the curve, select the keys you want to zoom and press F. I'm going to show you the tools you will use most of the time from this menu. Starting from the left, we have the Insert Keys tool. To add keys on your curve, click on the icon, select the curve and with middle click add the key. Or you can do this in a shorter way by select the curve, key press I on your keyboard and middle click. Then we have the stats. If you select a key, in the first box you have the number of the frame of that key. In the second box you have the body. You can also use it to change the key's frame, selecting the key and typing the new frame in the box. Or change the value by typing the new value on the right. If you want to edit multiple keys at the same time, you can't use the same method because you would have an error. But you need to use this equation. Plus, equal and the amount of frames you need. Example, do you want to move forward multiple keys by 20 frames? Use the equation plus equal 20 and all the keys will move forward by 20. 20 frames. If you want to move the keys back, substitute the plus with the minus. If you need to change the values of multiple keys, you can do the same by typing the equation I showed before and that value will be added to the existing one. Clicking on this icon, frame all, you fit all the curves in the windows. The shortcut is just pressing A. Then we have the different types of tangents that we can change just selecting the curve and pressing one of these icons. You have different tangents options and I just want to show you the most used ones. Out tangents, as you can see, it creates a smooth curve where the first and last keys are flat and the keys in the middle have an average value that never overshoot the value of the closed key. After a blocking phase I generally switch my curves in auto tangents and I polish the curve from here. You will have less bad surprise if you are used to animate directly from the viewport. Spline tangents is the most used one. It's a smooth curve just like the auto tangents but the tangents have the same angle of the previous and following key. The same for the first and last keys. Unlike the auto tangents, the spline overshoot the values between the keys. Example, uh, even if you have two keys with the same value, the spline tangents create a smooth curve between them, overshooting the value. Linear tangents create straight lines between keys with a linear speed. We use the linear tangents in many cases. An example is a movement that have to start fast and slow down at the end. Or when you create a walk cycle or run cycle in place, the movement when the feet is lying on the ground need to have linear tangents. Flat tangents makes all the tangents flat and horizontally. This is used to slow down the movements. With the flat tangents, the movement will be slower before and after the flat keys. Very used at the start of the end of a motion, the smooth, the start and the stop. Step it. This is the tangents mode to use during the blocking. It creates flat curve without interpolation. So the value change from a key to another without gradation. The result is a post pose animation useful when in a blocking phase you just want to focus on the concept, the posing and the timing. Another tool you will use often is the break tangents. When you want to adjust the curve selecting the handles, you can do it moving the handles together or in some cases you will need to manage one handle at a time so you can break the tangents and the handles will move individually. To loop an animation, a walk cycle or anything else you need to loop, the first thing to do is to switch on the infinity to visualize the cycle. From view, infinity. Then select the curves you want to cycle and go on curves and turn on the cycle on both pre and post infinity. So you go to cycle before and after your first and last keys. The cycle will repeat your animation curve as an infinity identical loop. 
Remember that to cycle an animation, your first and last keys have to be exactly the same. So they need to have exactly the same values. Another type of cycle you can use is the cycle with offset. In this case, the animation is loops, but if you have a different values on the first and last key, for example, like in a walk cycle forward or in a cycle in place when you want to move forward the main control, when you use cycle with offset, it will create a cycle that starts from the values of the last and first keys. If you want to take off the cycle, just select the curve pre and post infinity and choose constant. After you create the cycle, you have to adjust the curve to smooth the transition with the cycle. Uh, you could make the tangents flat in this type of curve when you have to loop between two extremes. In the example on the left, you have a jerk transition due to a sudden change of speed. Part of the curve is well smooth, the other is linear. So select your keys and choose the flat tangents from the menu and the transition will be automatically smooth. Or when you have the first and last keys that are not extremes but there's higher or lower keys after and before, you need to adjust the handles. In this case, a flat tangent doesn't work. So use the handles to create a nice and fluid movement. Remember that the first key tangents angle has to be the same of the last key. So when you change the handles, do it for both the tangents at the same time. In some cases, you will need to bake your animation. This means that the software will convert each frame in keyframe. This is useful in case you need to convert in keyframe a cycle or to keyframe a constraint or to export your animation for a game engine or other cases. To bake the keys, go on curves bake channel and open the options. Here you can choose which part of the animation you want to bake and the interval between the keys. So you decide to have a keys any 1, 2 or 3 frames as you prefer and you also can decide to bake a range of frames based on your current time slider or to choose a range typing the start and the end. This is not the only way to fix a gimbal lock or a flipping rotation issues and it doesn't work always but it works in many cases. A gimbal lock is a problem that you may have when one of your axes is rotated over another in parallel causing an unwanted rotation. Flipping issues is a bad rotation interpolation between two keys. The rotation wrap in the wrong way around a positive or negative 180 degrees. So if you have this type of issues, you can try to use the Euler filter. You can see it in the graph editor. The curve with the issues is pretty visible. Let's fix it selecting the keys and go to Curves Euler filter. And as you can see, it adjusts the rotation and the animation works properly.